All right, everyone, welcome back into another prize space and underdog video. Give me touch on the top prop bets, mostly in NBA and NFL today. Let's go ahead and get into it. So typically I would start out with the recap from the previous slate. Do still have Kyle Pitts for over 3.5 receptions on the bet slip from the day from yesterday. If that hits, it'll actually go only 50%. Kind of got unlucky yesterday. And actually, let's just touch on it. So I'll show you guys it. So this was it. And the annoying part about it is that this got bumped up to 20 once Devin Booker was ruled out. But it also did hurt the probability of the other props hitting as well because the game ended up being a blowout. Melton, who seemingly was going to get there, did not get there. And then Grayson Allen just didn't get as many minutes as he would have got if the game didn't blow out. Very unfortunate there. But even still, this one got bumped up to 20, so it should have hit. So very annoying. I'll show you guys a slip that I had. I ended up doing a small game stack for that game. And of course, the two that were the most probable to hit ended up hitting. Like I said, this one got bumped up a little bit more. And then I did mention we could potentially stack this game. Almost worked out. And it's funny that it chalked again. Like, I don't like using that term. I think it's kind of weird. But uh, Miles Turner was chalk in NBA DFS. And if you just took, like, what his ownership was at his price tag, he should have scored around 42 points you know given what the public thought he would score it ends up just being terrible everyone else gets there and then i do have one more as well i mentioned how porzingis and also uh jalen brown should be in for a little bit better games with Derek white out then when ben simmons was out we didn't see the brooklyn nets props really increase too much and that was kind of a point that i had it's like with everyone active i feel like we can't really touch these guys so this was a nice little game stack there as well. So all in all, like yesterday, I feel like was very solid advice. Hopefully we can get that to you guys again today. Now for NBA, it is going to be a very small slate. We got four games. Okay. So I will be touching on NFL as well. Let's start with NBA though. So looking at, we got the Phoenix Suns versus the Detroit Pistons. You know, Devin Booker sat out yesterday, I think because it was the front end of a back-to-back. -back. So I'm going to assume that he's going to play. We do need to get news on Bradley Beal though, because if he sits, obviously this game becomes very interesting. Like if actually, if one of those guys sits, it becomes very interesting going against Detroit. Right now, we do need to get news on Alec Burks. If he is out, that could create a little bit of value on this slate as well. And so we look at the injury report for Devin Booker. He was a late scratch, so that kind of tells me that he is probably going to play. And if he does play, I think we're going to see the full allotment of minutes for him. He would be someone that does get a great matchup. Uh, I want to see if we're getting actually any Suns props just yet. We are not because, because obviously those are two high usage rate players. So if they both sit, that makes the slate very different as we saw last game where Devin Booker was expected to play, ends up sitting and so that is where injuries can really matter and change the slate so I do just want to mention this like if he sits then we probably will actually be looking at like Grayson Allen to have a better game like if those two sit the game's going to be much closer and even still it's only a five and a half point spread so maybe someone like Grayson Allen who you know didn't exactly shoot the ball terribly but didn't exactly shoot the ball well I could actually see him being someone that does do better like I said you know just the game was a blowout he didn't get the minutes if the game stays close you know you probably would see him get 35 minutes. He I don't want to say he easily gets there, but I think it's safe to say he would have got there as well. But that's why it does matter whether those guys are active or not, because it does change the dynamic of the game. Now, I don't think Detroit's going to be blowing anyone out, so it should be safe regardless. But I do think we should have a good stacking opportunity against Detroit. I do think that they're going to be a team that we want to attack via stack. And for what's worth, we have seen Eric Gordon shoot a lot of times against the Spurs. He didn't, but other than that, you know, has been shooting the basketball a bunch. If those two are out, not a terrible option. But I do think we would probably want to be looking at one of the guards somehow, like maybe Josh Okogi, where he is someone that maybe fantasy points because he gets steals and blocks. Maybe that's something we can look at, but that's only going to be if Booker and Beal are out. So, you know, lack of clarity. Let's move on into Detroit. So Detroit, we are getting some props for, which obviously we like to see. And we already are saying Killian Hayes for under 7.5 points is going to be a good one. Let's look at his projected minutes because he is someone that, you know, I haven't really liked him as a player. It is NBA career. And yeah, if he only gets 27 minutes, then I would say, yeah, seven and a half points is probably going to be the way to go. Uh, this one's going to be one that probably gets bumped. It might already be bumped, honestly. 5.5 uh, assists for Cade Cunningham. He is someone that for the most part, he's either crushing it or, you know, barely just getting under it and the minutes he has been very secure for his minutes as well so he's someone that you know is a pretty consistent producer for fantasy points and just assists in general we are seeing isaiah stewart for rebounds and assists being a good one isaiah stewart projected only to get 26 minutes and that'd be the worry if he only gets 26 minutes then it's going to be tough for him to get there at the same time that's probably why we are getting such a low number and i don't know if i agree with that because look at his minutes that he has been getting he's been getting you know around 30 35 minutes and as long as this game stays close he should be fine now maybe the data is saying he might get into foul trouble going against kd and yusuf nurik i don't know if i exactly see that happening uh it's him starting and then Jalen Dern at the center. And then you're seeing uh, Marvin Bagley come in uh, to kind of spell those two. He's playing well, don't get me wrong. And Thompson as well for them. The small forward has been playing pretty darn well as well. 
But at the same time, he's been someone that's been a little prone to foul trouble as well. So I think we can bank on Isaiah Stewart not only getting more minutes, but also getting this over rebounds and assists. That is seemingly going to be one of the better prop bets that we have. And we can see, guys, like all these, uh, all these are pretty darn good. Rebounds and assists for all of them, which is pretty darn crazy if you ask me. But maybe there's something there. And then I did just go ahead and like refresh it on my end. We are still seeing that those are going to be good props as well. Just I was like, we, we need to make sure here. But yeah, they all have about a 53% chance. That, so those are all seemingly going to be good prop bets for you guys for Detroit there. And that might be the way that we go in and attack them. Now, I will say I don't mind them all in like a little bit of a stacking opportunity. Now, once again, I do think we want to favor fantasy score. I think that'd be the way to go. But if this game stays close, it's kind of like Vegas thinks it's going to. I think that all these guys are going to have a good chance to get their overs. Now, Jalen Dern has definitely been weird lately. You know, he didn't play a full allotment of minutes in the game against OKC, then got into foul trouble against the Pelicans. So to me, I think we are getting a pretty darn good edge here because, well, simply put, he got injured in that game against OKC, probably should have got the over there, was, you know, playing pretty well up until that point. And then you look at the Pelicans, got into foul trouble there. Now, could Yusef Nurk into foul trouble? Sure, that could definitely happen. But let's take a peek at his minutes here. I'm actually curious as to what they are. 28. And so I would say that's a little bit too low as well. I could see him definitely getting over that. So I don't mind points, rebounds, and assists, but he is someone that can get some blocks. So if we can get that fantasy score at about 27 or so, maybe even 28, heck, maybe in 29, I'd be fine betting the over there uh, because he is someone that I think is just due to get more minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and move on into the next game. We got the Raptors versus the Spurs, another game where I think maybe a little bit of potential to stack. The Raptors have been a team that have kind of been able to be a good kind of fantasy option because they'll either get blown out and the other team will be really successful or they're keeping games close and they're not really hindering any production for opposing teams we can see it is a 3.8 spread on average so kind of a close scoring game and that's the nice part about these first three games is that they're all projected to stay close so we don't have to really worry about anything in that regard looking at the injury report Devin uh, Vassell is someone that is currently questionable if he sits that is going to open up some usage for the Raptors I do think it's very important to note if Precious is going to be active or not, because if he sits, we're looking at Joachim Pertl getting some more minutes. All right, and we just got this news that he will not play in this game. So that, yes, let's talk about it. So yes, it's a little bit of a day, uh, different makeup for this team. I want to point that out. Just with uh, Webiyama there, that is going to really kind of change the dynamic of the team. We saw that with Chet Holmgren and the Thunder, even with SGA off the court, we didn't really see players like Jalen Williams and also Josh Kitty step up like they typically would have last year. I mean, like we could have banked on that. This year thus far, we are going to see Malachi Branahan is someone that if you're playing uh showdowns not a bad option here guys uh but he's someone that is expected to take the biggest bump in usage and minutes and everything like that projected to start right now okay he is someone that per 36 and I don't think we can project him to get 36 minutes but does average 12.7 points 2.6 rebounds and 4.6 assists also does average 1.6 steals and 0.5 blocks so maybe some we can be looking at maybe for fantasy score because if he's going to be getting more minutes about 30 or so that could be interesting. And I don't know if we'll get it. Again, this goes back to my gripe from yesterday where if someone's starting, I wish there's a rule for prize picks and underdog that they had to give a prop for them. He is someone that does average a pretty good usage rate with him off the court, about 24% usage rate, which is pretty high. Obviously, as a point guard, that does make sense. And then also about 26 fantasy points per 36. So he could be someone that we are looking at. Now, Trey Jones is going to be a can to get a slight bump in minutes as well, like probably closer to 30 in this one. He is next on the list in terms of who gets more minutes. He averages about 16.3 points, five rebounds, and eight assists per 36 with him off the court. And we can see he's someone that already does get a high assist total. So that is something to account for because if he's going to be playing a little bit more, I think we can be looking at their assists going up. Then I think the expectation is that uh, Sohan is going to start. He doesn't really change at all. Like his production is essentially the same. Okay. His plus minus actually gets worse with him off the court. So uh, usage goes up a little bit though, about 6.5% with him off the court. Uh, but I don't think we're looking at anything too different there. Maybe a slight bump and then from there everyone else kind of seems the same in terms of the players that we are getting props on because yes we are not getting any props just yet on trey jones which to me actually seems smart and so when we just pull up like what are the best prop bets for this team it does feel a little bit thin to me um maybe uh Webiyama you can roll with for the over 29.5 points rebounds and assists that's okay jeremy sochan maybe for over 5.5 rebounds that's okay kendall johnson was someone that i thought would average around 20 points uh, per game that has not happened just yet or calden johnson which to me is a little bit shocking now he he hasn't been shooting the ball necessarily poorly but he hasn't been shooting the basketball well like he's only had one decent game and so maybe against toronto which i don't see as a, an extremely difficult matchup he can get there but to me that does feel a little bit too thin let's look at the raptor side of it and i actually want to see yakum Pertle's projected minutes and i want to go down to points rebounds and assists for him and so he's only projected to get 28 minutes and i 
shouldn't say only. That's probably what we would expect. But if we see Precious sit again, I do think we're going to see Jakob Pertl continue to play pretty well, which is what we have seen over the last couple of games. Like we have been able to bank on him getting around 28 or so minutes as well, which has led to his production being there. Now we look at the game against Philly. Tough matchup, we know. Uh, four fouls in that game. Still not terrible. But obviously going against someone like Embiid is going to hinder some production. And so to me, I, I almost think that this is a better prop at than really what Vegas is saying, especially if we get news that Precious is going to be out. And so this is where it's unfortunate with price picks. Again, I, I'll give this uh, advice each and every video probably. It's that a bet like this to me is a much better bet on one of the sports books where we're seeing that the line on average across the sports books is 21. This is not a good bet on price picks because we want to be searching for those good EV bets. That is going to add up in the long term you're going to be more correct in the long term obviously if a bet has a 50.1 percent chance to hit, that's basically a 50 50 whereas if a bet has a 54 percent chance to hit, that is when we are mathematically gaining an edge on prize picks and underdog okay given the payout structures that they have now i do think the only way we can get there on yakum pertle and you'll see scotty barnes is one that I like as well is in the game stack and I do think that that's something we can do. So Scotty Barnes is definitely at an interesting line as well. The tough part about a play like this is to me, the reason why we are still getting a low line on him is because the, the books haven't really adjusted to how well he's playing to his usage rate. Like Scotty Barnes usage rate right now is 25%, most among the team. Okay. He's really just dominating right now. And so if we can bank on him getting around 35 minutes as the game is projected to stay close, to me, this line seems too low. And I know they do run out, you know, two bigs. Keldon Johnson is pretty big as well. Like I get that. But at the same time, to me, I think we are getting two lines there that are a little bit too low given how well that they have played thus far this season he has been crushing this and i don't see the spurs as a difficult matchup so that is something i do like do want to mention zach collins as well he is someone that on a per, per minute basis is not terrible uh going up against jacob Pertle, you know to me those are two similar plays i'm actually curious we got some fantasy score props for the later games okay i was gonna say maybe we have a good fantasy score prop for him and i like that for zach collins because he is someone that does get some blocks and steals so that would be the way to go about attacking that all right we move on to the next game we got the Golden State Warriors here versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, one and a half point spread, 220 for the over and under. So close game, not exactly the highest scoring game, but you know, all these games are pretty much the same. For Cleveland, the biggest piece of news I think we need to get is going to be what is going to happen with Jared Allen. He was um, limited with his minutes in the last game. And I think we can kind of assume that that's going to occur again. Had about 21 minutes in that game and really played well on a per minute basis. Just obviously his minutes were capped. And then Darius Garland came back and didn't really have his minutes capped. Um, so that is something where you know maybe we're getting some good props on him and we don't have to worry about the minutes being capped which is obviously gonna be huge the interesting thing that we saw is that donovan mitchell still had himself a pretty darn good game like he went off that's second best game of the year and he's been someone that has been going off as well so that didn't really matter that garland was active now yes it was a good matchup going against indy we're gonna say that that's gonna be a good matchup to chase this season i think as well so it does have partially due to that but Definitely noteworthy there. And for the Golden State Warriors, everyone is that you'd expect to play is going to play. So let's just look at the prop bets that we were getting for them. And looking at, we got Clay for under 17.5 points. You know, that's not terrible. About a 52% chance to hit. And then Curry for over 4.5 assists. I don't know. Do you guys think that those two correlate? Because I, I don't really think so. I think if uh, Curry is going to get 4.5 assists, which is seemingly going to be a very good prop bet, as we can see here, I would think that Clay would be part of the reason as to why, right? Like, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting one to me there. Uh, so it seems like you'd want to pick one or the other and then all the rest of them are kind of tight maybe you want to go curry rebounds and assists that's not terrible uh but all these are you know 52 percent 53 percent chance that they're all pretty tight so for cleveland the best prop bet that we currently have is actually evan mobley for over 9.5 rebounds probably going to be one that gets bumped but even at 10 it's okay i probably wouldn't be chasing it though at that point you could do rebounds and points combined but they are bumping it up to 24.5 instead of 24 we do see that the average sportsbook line though would have it set at 25.5 so not a terrible bet that we have there for evan mobley for over points and rebounds that's probably the one i would chase in this game but all in all this game is kind of seemed like one i don't really want to attack so we go ahead and move on into the next game we got the charlotte hornets versus the dallas mavericks so the biggest question mark that we have in this game is whether or not the game will still stay close it's 11 and a half point spread okay that is crazy now the reason why i was able to cash the six for six slip for the boston uh brooklyn nets game was because that game was projected to be a blowout so some of the prop bets were lower my bet was essentially saying I think this game is going to stay closer than what Vegas thinks. That ended up being true. Now, for the Hornets, I don't know if that's exactly going to be true. And the biggest piece of injury news that we have in this game is whether or not Terry Rozier is going to play. He is currently a game-time decision. Given the fact that he didn't return and given the 
prop line or given the game line that we have in this game i think we can expect that he is going to sit and then like basically right away gordon hayward had himself another pretty good game and he's actually been a pretty consistent uh, fantasy producer thus far this season and the nice thing about someone like gordon hayward is he has been gained a bunch of minutes you know in years past he's been a little bit injury prone his minutes hadn't been over like 33 consistently or over 30 consistently and we have seen that now with terry rozier off the court we don't have a big sample size really at all but we do see the mellow ball does get a very big increase in usage and so does pj washington so lamella ball sees a 9.2 increase in usage with rosier off the court that is something that obviously makes sense averages about 20 points per 36 which is up from his 14.6 six rebounds and 11.3 assists which is also up so he does definitely get a big increase in usage as we would expect so what should his points rebounds and assists prop be at well probably probably around 35.5 and so maybe even a little bit lower because the game is projected to be a blow so that could be a very good thing for us uh and then we also see he does average 2.4 steals also about four turnovers so not a lot can load there because the turnovers really negate the steals and blocks that he could potentially get and then from there it's actually Brandon Miller uh, gets the most minutes, but we do see PJ Washington actually has the biggest increase in usage at about 12.6%. Average about 5.6 more points, so around 24 points per 36, then 6.3 rebounds, so about a bump of 1.1 one and then 2.7 assists so not too much there but a big bump in usage 12.6 percent usage bump with terry rosier off the court and that makes sense you take out one score you you got to replace him with another score so that makes sense gordon hayward actually very small sample size so i don't really want to mention it's not even worth it it's only seven minutes so not even worth it so i do think we're going to see gordon hayward pj washington really all those guys get a big bump now i believe we're not getting any prop bets for them just yet because of that it's very we see that that's going to be a very big edge that we have if rosier is out and i do expect him to be out and so maybe once that gets confirmed, you guys jump in there right away to take advantage of the potential profits that we are going to get there. And so for the flip side of that, let's look at Dallas. And so the thing with Dallas is that yesterday was supposed to be a good matchup for the bigs for someone like Miles Turner. And we didn't see that happen. And honestly, I'm pretty thankful that we are not seeing any of the bigs have any big uh, projected props that we should be on. And I think that's a good thing. We are going to see that Kyrie Irving is kind of projected to struggle here. I don't know if I agree with that. Under 4.5 rebounds for him. You know, to me, these two are going to get some pretty good matchups. And yes, the rebounds have been down for him. So that does make a little bit of sense. And obviously, given the fact that the game is projected to be a blowout, I would probably be favoring that one. At the same time, I don't know, like rebounds for someone like Kyrie are a little bit fluky. Yeah, more times than not, he's not going to get there, though. Um, maybe maybe if we get some prop bets on Grant Williams, he's someone that could have a decent game going against P.J. Washington and Mark Williams. Now, Mark Williams had himself a good game last game. And it's funny, the, the two times where Mark Williams points props have been uh, like 10 and a half. They've been a 54% chance for the under to hit. He's crushed. Uh, so just keep in mind that next time that's popping up. But I do think Grant Williams maybe is someone we could be looking at prop at wise, uh, just because he's kind of been their third man. Yes. Tim Hardaway Jr. is very much shot dependent and he can get there if he's hot shooting the basketball, but Grant Williams has been their kind of number three. And so if this game's a blowout, maybe he doesn't get there, but I don't think that's going to change too much. I still think he's going to get his 30 or so minutes. And just for what's worth, guys, for Charlotte as well, like uh, Cody Martin could be back. You'd probably see the minutes there, but I, I think the usage would still be true. And then looking at the last game on the slate, Memphis versus Portland. And this game is only a two and a half point spread. This is going to be a game that we do want to stack as well and i think that's why we are gained the fantasy score props so looking at right now uh kamara was someone that we thought would step up into a bit or i thought would step up into a bigger role with scoot henderson off the court that did not really happen oh for three from three two for eight shooting the basketball so like yes the thought process was probably correct there but he did not get there he is currently a game time decision and so if he sits that's going to create a lot more minutes in this game as well now i'm actually curious are we actually getting malcolm brogdon props here we are 40 wow <laughs> oh geez that's annoying i've been begging for malcolm in case anyone doesn't know i've been begging for malcolm brogdon props and they're like all right here you go 40 that might actually be too low i'll touch on that in a second but it might be too low because we know some like scoot henderson is out and then i do think if kamara sits such just going to mean a lot more heavy mints for them now i do want to call for portland in their last game guys they did go into ot and so we're going to see a lot of their minutes be extremely high 44 minutes for malcolm brogdon that's not typically going to happen but i think we can bank on like 38 and so just looking at it thus far this season with simons and also scoot henderson off the court we do see malcolm brogdon average 23.4 points per 36 seven rebounds and seven assists so like what he did in that last game against memphis i would say it was not out of the norm and we do see in all the other games if he gets like six more minutes in those games he probably does get 
get close to 40 fantasy points in those. Uh, he averages a 29% usage rate, highest on the team. That is huge. That's a big number. We typically don't see that type of number. And then 43 points per 36, fantasy points per 36. So yes, this line might be a little bit too low. At the same time, it feels like that's only something we could do in a game stack. Now, I do want to refresh the data on my end, but I'll do that in a second because I want to see if we get more fantasy score props. Oh no, we're pretty good. We're pretty good now. I'm going to refresh it on my end. And the way, the reason I say that guys is I only get so many uh, refreshes per day. That's how I'm, uh, that's how I'm able to keep the cost down. And so when I refer to that in these videos, that's what I mean. Okay. That's how I'm able to only charge $10 a month. And like just buying the curtain is a little bit more like, yes, it's scheduled to refresh every hour. And then I can push like a few manual refreshes throughout the day as well when it's warranted. And all right, this is why I wanted to refresh it. So we are seeing Jeremy Grant and also Shaden Sharp. Those are also going to be two of the best fans to score props that we have on the slate. And I like that because once again, I do think that this is going to be a game that we want to stack. Now, I don't like the fact that DeAndre Aiden is being favored for the under there. And I also don't like the fact that we're not seeing Malcolm Brogdon's fantasy score prop up as a very good edge. I would say game script wise though, Malcolm Brogdon is probably one that we want to attack. Now we are seeing the line is probably correct for Malcolm Brogdon. And that's why it's probably just a game stack. It's a very high fantasy score total for him. But you know, I've been saying for quite a while, he's their best player currently. And this is what's annoying about the NBA. It's kind of clear if they were trying to win, they would be getting him more minutes. And as a Bucks fan, I think an all-time backfire would be if the Miami Heat for the Damian Lillard trade is, is if the Miami Heat got Malcolm Brogdon in a trade. Because obviously the Celtics got Drew Holiday which I don't know if that was exactly an upgrade. I know it might be a little bit of a hot take. I, I'm pretty high on Malcolm Brogdon is my point. So if he went to Miami, that would, uh, that'd be an all-time backfire, I think. And on top of that, they wouldn't have to get rid of like Tyler Hero or anyone. They could probably dump the Ty or uh, the Duncan Robinson contract there. But yeah, so let's take a peek at Jeremy Grant as well. So Jeremy Grant was someone that, you know, throughout the season had been a little bit annoying in terms of his fantasy point production. Uh, we saw that finally come, uh, we saw him finally have a good game last game. Now, I think that might've been partially due to matchup. And that's kind of weird to say with Jaron Jackson being the one that he's matched up against uh but he did get heavy mints he did get heavy shot attempts in that game guys so and he didn't even shoot the basketball well so he's someone that i think is a good candidate to shoot the basketball a little bit better assuming that he's still gonna be shooting the basketball a ton and he's someone when we look at his per 36 production with simons and henderson off the court does average about a 25 percent usage rate and about 30 fancy points per 36 and so that's interesting that at 33 we're actually seeing that be one that we want to bet the over so vegas is saying that jeremy grant is going to have himself a good game now Shaden Sharp was someone that was a uh, very uh, annoying prop bet on the last game because he was someone that we look at the data. It says that he should benefit the second most with those two players off the court, Scoot Henderson and Simons off the court. He got 34, just missed out. OK, you look at his per 36 production, which is what we can project him to get. 25.3 points, 6.5 rebounds, only 1.7 assists. Okay, so he's not really dishing the ball. And 1.1 steals. Only about 18 shot attempts, though. The issue that we have with someone like him is that if they aren't shooting the basketball too well, 7 for 17 is not the best. I mean, it's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but it's under 50%. 2 for 5 from 3, also not terrible. But, you know, you kind of expect him to have a better game shooting the basketball, especially when we look at the per 36 production with him off the court. And we do see that the minutes have been heavy. So I do agree with this. This should be a safe bet, especially given the fact that last game he did not get the over there to me that's kind of a clear cut one but again i do think we maybe want to be stacking i do want to take a peek at deandre aiden i don't get why this is being favored for the under i mean i guess his minutes are projected to be low 31 and so i would say that is still a little bit low for deandre aiden he had 36 in that game 34 32 and so at the start of the season he got into foul trouble against orlando and then that game against Philly was just a blowout pretty fast. He didn't need to get more minutes. And now we have seen against Toronto, he did get 32. Against Detroit, another kind of close game, he got 34. And then against Memphis, granted it was a blowout, he ends up getting 36 minutes. It does make sense for him to get around 30 or 32 minutes in this game. And I do think that he's going to get closer to that. And if that occurs, I think that his fantasy score that we're getting is just vastly too low. So this is my long way of saying I'm kind of just probably going to blindly bet on Aiden and Brogdon for their over fantasy score. And then the data is going to tell us Grant and Sharp are two of the better over fantasy score props. I do want to take a peek at Memphis to see if we are getting any good props there. So for Memphis, another one that was super annoyed in the last game was Marcus Smart for over his fantasy score. And this is where maybe we're going to benefit from Sharp not getting their last slate and Marcus Smart not getting their last slate. Those were two players that had a bunch of minutes that just didn't produce. And it was kind of shocking because they had been consistent fantasy producers. Now, my biggest worry was that Malcolm broad in defense would kind of hurt Marcus Smart and maybe we saw that or maybe we just saw Marcus Smart have two cold night um, shooting in a row maybe it's a little bit of both but at the same time I don't mind attacking a player coming in off of a 
poor night shooting. Okay, he only had one steal in that game, had five turnovers as well. So yeah, it, it probably was a little bit of both. Malcolm Brogdon defense kind of shut him down, but also he probably just had himself a bad game as well. And so if we can bet on him getting around 35 minutes in a close game like this, I do think that the over fantasy points makes sense. And we can see basically every other game he had been able to get there besides that game against Utah. That game against Utah, however, was a blowout as well. So, you know, really should have got there in every single game, but the last game. And so this to me is a pretty good line that we are getting. And then from there, Marcus Smart rebounds under. Don't love that. Uh, Marcus Smart rebounds and assists over. That's a weird one, right? Um, let's see Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, 42. That's a very high one for him. He had been someone that really had been struggling thus far this season, and he finally had a really good game. He is very much a little, I shouldn't say very much a little, that doesn't make sense, but he is very much dependent on whether he's getting blocks or not like his fantasy points are. And in that game, he did. And he also did have a good night shooting the basketball. Um, you know, DeAndre Ayton isn't the best defender, so you would expect him to still have a good game. To me, that 42 does seem a little bit too high. And I would say this is basically a push. If the game does stay close, yeah, I probably do expect him to get there. Zaire Williams, a guy that has been actually been a pretty consistent fantasy producer thus far. Again, if the game stays close, I do think that he probably does get there. But in that game, he did follow out. And he was still able to get there. So... Assuming he doesn't fall out, like you kind of expect him to get around 30, 30 minutes or so. And so maybe the line's a little bit too low considering that he fouled out. We look at Desmond Bain's fantasy score, not exactly something we want to chase. Again, probably just one in a game stack that we want to be chasing. And I will say, I would either do Marcus Smart over fantasy score or Desmond Bain. I don't see those two correlating a little, that much tonight. And so just looking at a bet slip for NBA, this is probably what we'd be looking at there, guys. Calden Johnson, probably the thinnest there, but we saw that's, that's a pretty good bet. I wanted to make this a six slip bet, so you could potentially just cross that off to get the five best bets. Let's go ahead and show you guys underdog, and that'll get into the NFL. So underdog, we're going to see more of the same. Of course, we're not getting any fantasy score props just yet, but we are getting two good EV bets. Kyrie Irving under 4.5 rebounds and then Killian Hayes for under 7.5 points. Now let's go ahead and get into football. So for football, we are going to see that Jaron Hall for under one passing touchdown is going to be a good one. And I probably agree with that. I just, I see this being a game in which we are going to see a very run heavy script. Now, can a player break a big play? Sure. But he was someone that was pretty terrible in the preseason. Like one of the quarterbacks that you look at and you didn't see really much hope for him to get better. Now we did see Will Levis, probably you would argue basically the exact same thing for him. And he had himself a very, good opening game okay who is jaron hall going against he is going against that falcons team that made will levis look good so yeah could he maybe get one passing touchdown sure but the chances are this is going to be a push and i, I do think that that's a pretty good one we are seeing deonta foreman for under 5.5 receiving yards is a pretty good bet as well same thing with robert tanyan in that same kind of game with deonta foreman that's not terrible uh kj osborne fantasy score do we want to do that to ourselves over seven for a fantasy score and then we all start seeing jordan addison to be the exact same thing as well the reason as to why i think that those are popping up while Jaron Hall's under is because, well, maybe they're playing from behind in that game, but they also have been players that had been getting targeted heavily up until that point. And so like, regardless, you do still expect them to probably get around five receptions each. Maybe it's a little bit of garbage time production. We know the Falcons defense isn't that great, but I will say, I think the production for the Vikings, especially the receivers is going to depend on the run game. If they can establish the run, they're going to be able to hit some play action plays that should lead to KJ Osborne for an open 20 yard catch here and there. And same thing for Jordan Addison. We just need Jaron Hall to hit them. So it does feel a little bit risky. And I would say probably not betting Jaron Hall under passing touchdowns with Osborne and uh, Jordan Addison for over their fantasy score. Like those don't correlate. So don't do that. And then from there, Zeke Elliott, I don't want to do his under receiving yards. I don't feel good about that. Hunter Henry for over 6.5 for a fantasy score is one that I do like. So New England is going up against Washington, a team that has struggled. And we do know that the Patriots are going to be without Kendrick Bourne and also Devonta Parker. That's going to lead to Demario Douglas, a player that I like probably having a good game, but we can see Hunter Henry has been someone that has been kind of consistently in the game plan, but now they are probably going to have to throw the football a little bit more. And, you know, Mac Jones at times has looked terrible, but at least in games where he probably should be throwing the football well, he kind of has done that. And so this is a game where for Hunter Henry to get 6.5 fantasy points is not that much. Aiden O'Connell, I don't agree with this, guys. I, I think I'd much rather bet the under on underdog. He really struggled in his first game and I think that's why we're getting such a low line I'd rather bet the under on underdog I think that that's definitely going to be the way to go Mike Gusecki as well kind of echoing the fact that Washington has a good matchup and they're and we're going to see that the Patriots are without their top two pass catchers now I personally like Demario Douglas and I probably like him for his over fantasy score might be a little bit too thin but he is someone that I do expect to be heavily involved in this game plan and given that
given the matchup, I do think he has a good chance to get over there. And guys, we are seeing that we are getting a lot of tackles and assist props. And I just kind of want to highlight both the fantasy score props real quick and then also the tackles and assist props. And so, yes, don't get me wrong. It is nice to see all those other props. But to me, the, the two kind of most predictable ones that we have on the site are going to be tackles and assists. We saw that be very good last week. I kind of want to go back to that. And we are just getting some good edges there. I will touch on some receptions props because I think that those are more predictable. And then I think fantasy score. So we already mentioned a few of them. I feel pretty good about these ones that we're getting. James Cook for under 11.5 for a fantasy score is an interesting one as well. I don't think his role is going to get reduced too much this game with Leonard Fournette, you know, potentially being back. I don't even know if he's going to be active just yet, but that is definitely an interesting one. Deonta Foreman for under his eight fantasy score is definitely another interesting one. Roshan Johnson, they kind of like him a little bit more, although Foreman has looked pretty good. And they also have two other receiving backs, and that is a game where they could be playing from behind, and so I probably would agree with that. Mark Andrews does get a more difficult matchup, so you could be betting the under there. Uh, we are seeing that... Josh Jacobs for under his fantasy score probably makes sense as well. Uh, I just don't think that offense is going to do too well without him. Now, that is very much dependent on him not getting that many catches and him not scoring a touchdown, but I probably feel pretty good about that one. Dalton Kincaid was one that we got to at 9.5. Same thing with Chuba Hubbard. This was set at 9 earlier. These are two seemingly good edge that, edges that we are getting. Uh, a lot of people are going to hate this, but Jordan Love for over 15 for a fantasy score is seemingly a good one that we are getting. Kyle Pitts is someone where we saw his receptions prop get bumped to four and if that happens that is like 45 receiving yards this is probably a good one there as well so we can see here guys we are getting a bunch of good fancy score props there okay and i would say that those are pretty pretty good i do want to mention tackles and assists because this is seemingly a good one and i want to concentrate on the ones in which we are getting the same line so we got jordan poyer for over 5.5 tackles and assists about a 55.8 percent chance for that one to hit micah hyde for over four 4.5 and also about a 55.8 percent chance to hit we go down we got white for over 8.5 tackles and assists another pretty good one jair alexander 3.5 about a 54 percent chance to hit. and that's why i wanted to mention these ones we're getting a bunch of prop bets for the tackles and assists that have a, a pretty good ev chance to hit and then lastly i do like looking at receptions i don't know about this one with someone like cooper cup although you do expect him to be shadowed by uh, jair alexander so that's a decent one khalil shakir is someone that i do think is going to step up into a bigger role now i do think that that's very much okay dawson knox is still out okay i was gonna say that's very much dependent on dawson knox being out he is on the ir so i do think we're going to continue to see khalil shakir step up into a bigger role we saw that instantly happen where the routes that maybe dalton kincaid was getting we actually saw shakir step up into that role a little bit more he was someone that was pretty high on going into the off season and then we saw during camp and whatnot that maybe it wasn't gonna be as involved but no I feel like he kind of broke out. He actually could end up being their receiver number two. I like his talent a little bit more than Gabe Davis. So to me, that is a pretty darn good bet that we are getting there as well. And so this would be my bet of the day. Now, I know a couple of these are going to be for Sunday night football. And so I want to give, and this is just for NFL. So I do want to talk about like, just let's do an NBA and NFL bet mixed together. I am going to be avoiding the Sunday night football game just because I'm going to do a separate video on that. But I do want you guys to go ahead and use those ones if you see fit this is kind of more for honestly content purposes because i know people want to play the afternoon uh and maybe have a separate slip for the sunday night football game all right so here is what the bad of the day would be and i will say i want to start with saying i do hate the fact that two of the best profits that we're getting are going to be for the Vikings because I do think Jaron Hall is going to struggle. But at the same time, again, we did see Will Levis really have a good game against that Falcons defense. And so again, I think that those prop bets are really going to be dependent on whether or not they can establish the run so that they can start to hit some play actions to those guys where they can get a couple of chunk yardage plays. Vegas is saying that those are two very undervalued prop bets so that we are getting. And so if you guys don't want to use those, I get it. I'm not expecting big things from Jaron Hall. Then the next four are pretty good ones. Uh, you know, we're getting a little bit of a game stack here, which I don't mind. Uh, Shane Sharp and Marcus Smart were two players that underwhelmed in the last game, kind of had poor night shooting. That is supposed to be a close game, and I think it's going to be a fruitful game for us. And then Jeremy Grant is also another good one, another player that didn't exactly shoot the basketball well, and that's probably why we are getting lower lines than what Vegas thinks is going to happen. Then Hunter Henry with the top two pass catchers out, asterisks because I think it's Douglas, but he should be someone that's more involved, especially against that Washington commander's defense that's not as good. Now, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the coverage. If you did, make sure to give a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well while you're at it. Let's have a good slate on this Sunday. If you guys want access to any of the tools that you saw in this video, it's, it's available for just $10 a month. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.